Streaming to you live from an undisclosed location deep within the bowels of the Rose City, it's live in Portland with Chris Franklin! This week, welcome comedy by Jeremiah Coughlin, comedian Andy Main, LNP's friendly neighborhood running Jesus. And music by Zephyr the Wolf, with our resident extraterrestrial, Sexy Marvin! Now here's your host, never one to chafe under pressure because he sweats body glide. His track short shorts love him as much as you love to see him in them. Usain Bolt cannot keep pace with him. He goes to distance, he goes for speed, he's Chris Franklin! Thank you so much, Josh. You'll be coming to the stage a little bit later. Everybody, this is episode 27 of Live in Portland. I want to welcome the studio audience. I want to welcome the audience at home on Facebook and YouTube. This is our 27th episode, and it's something very special to me. Um, I had a long talk with my mom today, which is, mom, shout out. <laughs> I know you're watching. Um, and she reminded me to remember the moments in life. You know, we don't know when our end is going to come. We know it is ahead of us. Um, but to live every day to its fullest, and, and a lot of that is living within the moment and knowing that you are exactly where you're supposed to be. Um, so if you're feeling down on your finances, feeling down on your relationships, know that there are, these are moments that you grow um, you are exactly where you're supposed to be, and these are moments that you learn, and our expectations are going to be far exceeded uh, when we live out the dreams that are in our mind, and this is all about creative artists who live here in Portland, creative musicians, entrepreneurs, comedians, um, people expressing what's in their heart through their art. Uh, so with no further ado, I have an amazing comedian coming out. Um, Portland has had a just incredible uh, comedic scene. My co this comedian, he's toured the Pacific Northwest. He's toured the nation. Um, he's going to give you a hell of a show. So everybody, please welcome Joshua. Come on out. <laughs> Joshua Coughlin. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Uh, my name's Jeremiah, but that's okay. Uh, how's everybody doing? Good? Yeah, good. Jeremiah Coughlin, that's my name. Uh, I got married 10 days ago. Yeah, like an idiot. God, what a fucking moron. Not a good idea. Uh, it's so far so good. I don't know what all the hubbub is about. We're killing it. Everybody... Everybody's happy. I don't know. People make a big deal about it, but it's been really easy. Uh, I was married once before, so that might have helped. Uh, I don't really talk about my ex-wife. I don't do jokes about my ex-wife because uh, she wasn't fucking funny, most of the reason why. Um, she's not, I don't know. She wasn't a bad person. She was a bad person, just not like an evil person, I guess. She was the kind of person who would cheat at bar trivia. You guys know a person like that? Yeah. Like, I caught her blowing a dude when we were at Bar Trivia one night. <laughs> Some people use cell phones, right? She took a different route. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to be here. Uh, I started driving Lyft recently. Does anybody take Lyft to get where they want to go? Yeah? Yeah, that's good. Uh, I don't call it Lyft driving, though. I call it open mic by hostage situation. Uh, yeah, if you're going to get in my car, you're going to hear some jokes. I don't give a shit about your five-star rating either. I'll drive around the block a couple times. I don't care. I, I'm trying to get this comedy thing going. I, I do still have a day job. Uh, I'd love to be doing comedy full-time for a living, but my parents just don't have that kind of money. So I got to go to work every day like a normal person. Uh, I work for a beer distributor here in Portland, which is pretty fun. People seem to like that. I get to drive a van that says PBR on the side of it 
which means you can just drive like a real dickhead whenever you want. I also get to hang out in convenience stores a lot, which is where the real action is. I don't know if you guys have been to a plaid pantry lately, but Jesus Christ. I was in a, I was in a convenience store the other day, stacking cases of beer, minding my own business, and this, uh, this woman kind of appeared out of nowhere. Uh, I would describe her as cracky. Right now, a lot of like a tweak or anything, but just kind of a gross lady. You didn't want to touch you. And uh, there was a bunch of people in line. It was pretty early in the morning, and she came up to this Lay's potato chip display, but it was the new weird flavors. And she grabbed a bag of biscuits and gravy potato chips, and then she, she held them up over her head and exclaimed to all the people in line, don't eat these. They taste like asshole. And everyone just kind of giggled and looked at each other like, I don't know what to do with that information right now at this hour of the day. But then there was just one old guy in the back of the line who was like, sure, fuck it, man. He went and got himself a bag, right? He was like, I haven't tasted a butthole since college, man. You figure $1.99, that's probably the cheapest butthole you're really going to get after. He seemed pretty excited about his purchase. The ringing endorsement from that crackhead lady. Get him some ass chips. Uh, I, I have a birthday coming up. I will be turning 37 in three weeks, which I, I feel okay about. Yeah, I don't know. It's 37 sounds a lot closer to 40 than 36 did. Uh, that happened quickly. It was like just one day. I was like, oh, okay. Well, I guess we're about to be 40. Uh, I don't know. Uh, probably almost everybody in this room identifies as a millennial. Everybody online, everybody, everybody that has any idea what we're doing right now is a millennial. And... <laughs> Because I'm old. It's true, right? I'm not exaggerating. Literally anybody that is partaking in this is a millennial. And I'm in this weird like gray area where I'm not Gen X and I'm not a millennial. There was like a weird one year gap for some reason. That's the way they set it up. And that's fine. So I don't identify as a millennial, but I hang out with comics all the time that are all younger than me. So I hear a lot of uh, just kind of the goings on of millennials and I don't know, man. I mean, I get it. I get it. Like, I, I'm not like, like, I don't want to be the grumpy old guy. Like, I don't think it was participation trophies that ruined you guys. I don't think that's it. That's stupid. I think it was the choose your own adventure books. Really? I mean, you guys really got to play God there for a long time with those fucking books. And uh, I, I, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. But uh, I also, I overhear a lot of weird conversations, like I heard this comic talking, it was around Christmas time, he was talking about what he got for Christmas, and he had received a katana blade for Christmas, which is a badass gift, yeah, if you get a sword for Christmas, you should brag about that, uh, but he was telling us all about this this uh, sword that he got, and he was like, you know, the first thing I did, I, I went home, and I got some watermelons, and I sliced those fuckers in half, and I was like, yeah, that's that's exactly what you should do with a, with a katana blade. And he's like, well, then I started Googling, like, what to do, like, to take care of a sword. And you can't just resheath a sword after you cut a watermelon in half. You have to get special cleaner and go through this whole process. And it's this whole big thing. And he's like, you know, I was really disappointed because I wanted a sword. And instead, I got a responsibility. <laughs> That's a real thing a 22-year-old kid said out loud. And, and my first thought was, you should get a vasectomy. Like... <laughs> right now, I think, would be good. Like, I have a dog, but I'm never like, you know, I, I wanted to play fetch, and now I got a responsibility. Like, there's so many things I don't know. I guess, are there parents here? Anybody here a parent? Okay, yeah, a couple. Like, there's just a bunch of shit you don't know about. Like, you, did, who knows that you can't give babies water? Yeah, they'll die. You can't give babies water for six months. They'll die from that shit. It's serious. Yeah, this is where we divide the room. Chris, you do not get a sword. It's you can't have a sword. Sorry, you're not responsible enough. There's this weird. <laughs> there's this group of people. They're like, of course you can't give babies water. What are you crazy? And then there's everybody else. It's like, wait, what? I would have never even thought of that. <laughs> it's true. I. Uh, what else? I've been trying not to be so fat all the time. Uh, that's not going, it's going all right. Not going great, but it's going all right. I, uh, my my uh, wife and I, we just did the Whole30 food plan together. Has anybody done the Whole30? Nobody? You tried it? How many days did you make it? 
14. You did the whole 14. That's good, too. No, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I actually made it 30 days. Uh, I lost 20 pounds in those 30 days, which I felt good about. I gained it back. Shut up. Uh, I gained it all back. I was telling my friend that. I was like, you know, I lost 20 pounds in 30 days. I felt good. And they were like, you know, they're... Uh, they're a doctor, and they're like, that's not really good for you, you know, to lose that much weight that quickly, you know, and especially if you're just going to gain it back, that's not really healthy. Um, uh, but they're not fat, so I told them to get fucked. I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't care about being healthier. That's not really my goal here. It'd just be cool to see my dick again is all. Yeah, that's it. That's all I care about. It's going to happen, too. We're going to be reunited. It's going to be great. Uh, this lady came up to me a couple weeks ago after a show. She was like, hey, I really liked your set, and uh, good luck growing your dick back. And I was like, no, that's not what's happening. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it to you that I, I wasn't in a horrible accident or anything. It's just that the rest of me is shrinking. I don't know. Uh, what do you say? I was like, good luck with those kegels, lady. I don't know. We've all got work to do is all I'm saying. Uh... We'll go with a big uh, closer. I got to get out of here. I think I didn't actually put my watch on. Were you timing this? No. All right. Well, what? Do... It's, good. it's gonna be great. Yeah. Are you guys having a good time, audience of few? Yeah. yeah. Good job. That was great. I love doing comedy. I love getting to travel around. Uh, I love going uh, to cool places. I love hearing stories about people when they go to different places. I have a friend who recently went to Mexico for a week to see the band Fish play for three days in a row. Uh, it's just a fact of the story. There's, it's not a, I'm not going to sing the songs or anything. People will get uptight when I mention that band. Um, but him and his wife go to Mexico, and they come back, and the first day they're in Portland, he's telling me the story about the two of them in a bar in Mexico, and this woman walks up to him, and she has a baby in a Bjorn, which is a strappy thing you carry a baby in. You guys knew, I didn't know that. I had to Google it. Um, I thought it was that weird Icelandic lady, but that's, that's Bjork. That's different. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and she walks up to my buddy and his wife and she's like, hey, can I talk to you guys? I'm not a weirdo, which you know is the first goddamn thing a weirdo says when they walk up to you. She says, uh, I'm kind of upset right now. My husband just bought cocaine from one of the waiters here at the bar. Do you think that was a bad idea? Uh, yeah, if you're asking strangers in a foreign country about the decisions your family are making, they're probably not great decisions. Uh, but what this woman doesn't know is that my buddy's wife, uh, she's a pediatrician. And so she hears cocaine, and she sees the baby, and she starts kind of giving this lady a, you know, the riot act about how careful you have to be if you're breastfeeding and all these health things, right? Like the lady's just going to start doing bumps off its baby while she packs it around the dirty old streets of Mexico. And then as my buddy's telling us this, he's like, you know, women have to be very careful when they're breastfeeding. Whatever they ingest comes out through their breast milk. And then he said something stupid which people tend to do if they're dating a doctor or married to an architect or whatever. They think they know shit that they don't know. And it drives me crazy. He says, you know, if a woman who's breastfeeding smokes one joint, it comes out in her breast milk as eight joints. Yeah, that's not true. That's not a real thing. Portland, don't be concerned. Uh, and I think what he meant to say is that if a woman who's breastfeeding smokes one joint, the concentration in her breast milk is eight times higher than in her blood. That is true. I Googled it right after the Bjorn thing. Um, but that's not what he said. He said the other thing, and I know the other thing isn't true because we have legal weed here in Oregon, and if a woman could smoke one joint and turn it into eight joints, somebody would be making edibles out of fucking titty milk right now, right? <laughs> that would be a thing we have here. Like she's some kind of refinery, you know? Like, like we, gave, we gave her Vicodin, and she turned it into black tar heroin. Like, it's not real. Thank you guys a lot. I'm Jeremiah Coughlin. I don't know who Joshua is, but thanks, Chris. Jeremiah, everybody. Jeremiah, first off, uh, we shouldn't start milking women for weed. Just pub public service announcement. <laughs> Jeremiah, <laughs> you got a lot going on. Uh, you've got a show coming up in September. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Uh, okay, into the microphone. Yeah. Uh, I host a show at Helium Comedy Club. It's called For the Record. And the purpose of the show is to give people that might not get a lot of stage time at Helium Comedy Club, which is the best comedy club in Portland, Oregon, uh, a chance to get on stage and we film their sets for submission purposes for them to uh, get on shows like this and go to festivals and that kind of stuff. And it, it's, a, it's pretty much a professionally done video and they don't pay for it. Um, so basically, like, your payment for the show is your tape 
And we've, we've had a lot of great comics, and we've got a lot of great comics coming up on September 13th, which is a Thursday. And it's going to be a, a really good show. That's awesome. Um, as we've developed our show, episode 27, we've had a ton of Portland comedians on and just blown away by the talent in the city. Uh, what can you say, like, is it a tribute, a tribute to that? Um, why do we have such a high concentration of just really strong comics in the city? That's a, that's a good question. I think uh, it's cheap to live here. That helps. There's a, lot of, there's a high concentration of young people that live here. But there's also there's good comedy clubs here. There's, um, there's good training grounds. I mean, there's open, the open mic scene here. I mean, you can go six nights a week, and you can, do a, you can do over 20 open mics a week, I think, anymore. Like, um, and it wasn't always that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and there's, just, there's a, a good crop of people that are still here that are, are successful in, in the comedy world and people who have left. So there's, there's a lot of different avenues for people to see and a lot of like, um, examples for people to base what they're doing off of, I think. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and we've got something to talk about. Yeah. You've got an album. Yeah. Yeah, I made an album last year. It's called, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's called Seamus McGravy. Uh, which is a, um, a joke uh, about a character that lives in my head that tells me to eat cheeseburgers. And uh, last, uh, yeah, last winter, the uh, good people at Kelly's Olympian came to me, and they were looking to produce records for local comics. And so I made a record, and I've made, uh, I think I've sold like almost 300 of them in the last year, which is pretty cool. The guy who makes them for me, uh, shout out to Saturn Duplication, uh, his, I, I'm his number one customer because nobody buys CDs anymore, but for some reason people buy that stupid thing after shows. So, uh, and you can buy it on Bandcamp. So if anybody watched it on the internet wants, you know, wants to laugh, go ahead, check it out. It's pretty good. It's like 45 minutes of, you know, me singing sweet child of mine. And no, <laughs> I don't, I don't do that. Actually. That's beautiful. Jeremiah Coughlin, uh, where can my audience find you on the interwebs? Oh yeah. Uh, at Jeremiah Coughlin on Instagram and Facebook, and my Twitter handle is at ha ha underscore jcoff, because uh, if you say it fast, it sounds like something dirty. And uh, and then I have a website called, it's just jeremiahcoughlin.com, but it's very under construction and has been for years, uh, because I don't know how to make websites. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Everybody put your hands together for Jeremiah Coughlin. <laughs> Thank you very much. Marvin, take it away. introduced uh, the wrong name. It's the combination of weed, nerves, and names. It's a deadly combination. <laughs> Marvin, how was your weekend? Really? So what do you, I mean, I get it. I, I would assume that extraterrestrials had psychedelics, but like, what do you use? But you only find it on your anus? That's weird. <laughs> Thank you, Marvin. I think I'm done asking about that. <laughs> My next guest, I'm so excited to have her on. She runs Revolution Comedy. Um, she's been a guest on the show. We've seen her comedic set. Tonight, we get to know more about her. Andy Main, please come on out. <laughs> Do I need to speak into this? I don't know. Do what, what are we doing? Okay. We're, we're good. <laughs> How do I sound? <laughs> <laughs> Andy, welcome to the show Thanks again. Thanks for having me again. Yes. Uh, we're here to talk about some of your comedic sets. Uh, you do several shows. Uh, yeah. But first of all, Revolution Comedy. Yeah. 
uh, Revolution Comedy has been around for three years. I started it before Trump, so I really meant it. Yeah. And, uh, it started because I wanted to raise money for Bernie Sanders. And um, then it just, I realized, oh, there's a lot more fucked up shit to take care of. And I, I don't pretend that comedy is going to fix all of the problems in the world, but it is great to raise money for things like smashing ice or like um, Planned Parenthood. Just all of, all of the damn fucking problems we have. Totally, totally. You know, it feels overwhelming. So I do, I do fundraisers with yeah. comedy for it. Yeah. And what I really love about comedy um, is that it really opens up the room. Like, historically, it has a presence of, like, addressing the king. You know, the jester mm -hmm. would make fun of the king yeah. just to humble him. Yeah, punching up. Yeah. Speaking truth to power. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm sure you find a lot of that in uh, the comedic scene. And, and when they have that energy, uh, particularly on your stage, uh, you probably get some great, unique comedy. Yeah. Um, the thing that I love about the way I book my show is that when there's a specific issue, I find comedians that can relate to that issue. Yeah. And, the, and then their material is going to relate to it, too. Like, right. um, I did a show for Democratic Socialists last month, um, and the theme was about smashing ice. Mm -hmm. And um, every comic on it was an immigrant or refugee or children of immigrants or refugees. So wow. they were all able to, like, speak very personally about yeah. the matter, and um, I just felt like, it, I feel like it's more powerful that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Revolution Comedy as a platform, um, it, it's amazing that you're putting these people together. You are the curator. Mm -hmm. um, tell me, I mean, it's three years running. Prior to its existence, what drove you to create this? Um, well, it was Bernie Sanders that gave me, like, the inclination that we should throw money at politicians who we want to succeed you know like i've been i've been a political person my whole life like i've always voted i've always protested but like everyone else in the room 2016 changed everything yeah and um the show was created while trump was running for president and just mm -hmm. like the aspect the, the prospect of him running for president was so scary to me that i'm like we gotta do something here yeah and it just seemed like a great way to get Here's something with being a comedian and mm -hmm. doing all types of rooms is that I don't want to entertain every type of person. I only okay. want to entertain people who I already relate with. Like, I'm right. not in this to change minds. I'm in this to laugh at bullshit with other people who agree that shit's bullshit. Totally. You know, so, like, that's, the, that's my favorite part about the show is that we're attracting an audience of like-minded people. Right. So we don't have to, like, waste our time with, like, questions about whether or not we should punch Nazis. Everyone in that room <laughs> yeah, thinks agrees. we should fucking punch a Nazi. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think you have a, a really nice place in Portland, but Oregon as a whole, um, we have a very, I, I, let's say, uh, diverse way of looking at things. <laughs> or very homogeneous, I don't know how to say yeah, it. Homogeneous, super, yeah. super white way of looking at the world outside of Portland. Totally. I mean, Oregon is terrifying. Yeah. I mean, Oregon's more terrifying than California, maybe not as Washington. I don't know, but the rural parts in this country are terrifying. I think it's I don't know. pretty interesting as a black man who does a lot of outdoors activities, uh, the Confederate flags oh. north of the 45th parallel oh. just oh. absolutely crack me up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you, are you like on a trail out in the wilderness? You're like, I will tread on this. <laughs> so, so we are coming into an election, yeah. uh, which is why I bring this up. Um, Midterms. For, for all the people who want to be activated, they want to hit the streets, they want to protest, like this is the time when our voice matters. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a bit about how you're preparing for the uh, midterm election. Um, well, I've done a couple shows about the midterms coming up. Um, but this next one is specifically to raise money for Kate Brown, our current governor, who, mm -hmm. you know, she's pro-abortion, she's pro-women's health, um, she's pro all the good stuff, and she's terrifying to the GOP, especially as a woman and as a gay woman, like, that's so scary to them. And they have a, uh, they have a candidate named Newt Bueller, who, um, he's like, their ads right now are scary. I've seen them where it's like, mm -hmm. he's pro-gay marriage. He's pro-women's health care. Like, that's how they're 
they're they're saying that he's a moderate Republican. Okay. And yeah. I'm like, oh, are there moderate Republicans? Right. Are there Republicans right now who aren't voting with Trump's agenda? You right. know, like when you look at Congress and the Senate, that's not true. Right. Um. So like every. So once he's in, he's trying to do the hard sell, and then he's once a Trojan he's in, horse. Yeah. You know, he's a Trojan horse, and yeah. uh, we got it. We got to get Kate back in there again. So that's where we're fundraising for, and um, that'll be in a week from today. So we're going to raise money for her, and we're going to try to flip a couple other seats um, and have them go from Republican to Democrat. And uh, we're working with a couple organizations at the show. It's like you pay $5 for the ticket, that goes to the theater and operating costs, and then we ask that you make a donation directly to causes that we're supporting for the theme of our show. So this Mm -hmm. next one is, is about the midterms. This show is called Stand Up to Literally Save Democracy. Because yeah. I feel like if Democrats don't win, then we're so fucked. Right. Like, right. Um, you know, because Trump has to be held accountable. And um, so we're, we're supporting Kate Brown and we're trying to flip other seats and uh, just keep Oregon blue. And, and going on with that, with your show, you contribute, you, you have raised tens of thousands of dollars yeah. to a few nonprofits. Do you want to talk about that? Um, yeah. I've supported probably 10 or 15 different nonprofits at this point. And um, I don't count how much we raise anymore because I, I just can't. Um, I, I don't want to ask how much money people are donating when they're coming to the shows because that feels intrusive. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, through coming to the show and making a donation, um, we've raised over 10 grand for places like Don't Shoot PDX, and uh, Planned Parenthood, both like n- locally and nationally, um, uh, the Democratic Socialists. Uh, what else? We did a Cancer Society fundraiser, and also one for um, a kids' soccer team, like an underprivileged awesome. kids' Ooh. soccer team, like a real <laughs> Mighty Ducks kind of show. That's awesome. Yeah. So we bought we bought um, equipment for like little uh, disadvantaged kids. That's really it was cool. Super heartwarming. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know that they were like. Um, run by a queer organization until the show happened. And I'm like, wait, it's for queer, disadvantaged, impoverished youth? I'm all over this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and in a lot of ways, like Lost in Portland, Live in Portland, we're here to promote where people's passion meet their purpose. And in a lot of ways, that's what you're doing. Um, uh, before you leave, you have two more shows that you uh, have coming up. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that. Um, well, I run a weekly show that's free every Thursday at the Doug Fur, mm-hmm. and um, that's going on through the end of summer. It's called the Cool Kids Patio Show, and it's a free happy hour show between 6 and 8 at the Doug Fur on Thursdays, as long as there's not too much smoke in the air. Yeah. Um, but it's fun. It's like an hour of comedy and an hour of music, and yeah. it's just it's killer. It's so much fun. It's like the only reason I like summer. I'm an indoors kid. <laughs> I don't like it outside. We've done it three years in a row now, and it's so much fun. Yeah. And then um, I'm also hosting a taping um, for two who, hysterical local comics, Becky Bronstein and Mahana Del Shecky. They have been picked by... Um, Epics, which is a premium cable channel, mm-hmm. um, who are trying to become like the new HBO, and they're they created a series, Wanda Sykes produced it, and it's called um, Unprotected Sets. And it's... Nice. Fo- yeah, very, very <laughs> clever. Um, and uh, it's, it follows and documents comedians who are on the rise and coming up. Yeah. So um, this is going to be Mahana and Becky's big taping. Karina Lucas is also a part of it. She's featured. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I get to host it. So uh, we're all getting TV credits. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's awesome. yeah, yeah. So that's at Curious Comedy Theater. Not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. All right, Andy. Yeah. You seem to be doing a lot of work. Very busy. <laughs> uh, how can my audience here and my audience uh, home on YouTube and Facebook reach out to you? Um, I'm at Andy Main on everything, and my name is A N D I E, like Andy McDowell, M A I N, like Main Street. So Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook at Andy Main. Awesome, Andy. Yeah. Thank you so thank much you, for Chris. coming back. You're the this has been great. Yeah. Marvin, take it away. <laughs> Guys, this is episode 27. I'm so excited we're here to showcase 
Portland's creative entrepreneurs, musicians, comedians, the people who were really doing things from their heart. Um, it's an honor to be supported by a local small business, uh, Abbey Creek Winery, um, based out of Portland, the only vineyard in Portland. Their winery is in North Plains, a uh, black-owned winery. They play hip-hop uh, the whole time in the winery. They're open Saturdays and Sundays. It's such a dope spot owned by such a dope man. Um, I'm really excited to be a part of what they're doing um, and building community. So everybody give a hand of, round of applause for Abbey Creek. My next guest, uh, I'm excited to have him on. He's here every week with us. Uh, he's such a lightning bolt of energy, and we are going to see that lightning bolt move from Mount Hood to the coast. Uh, Josh Donahue, come on out. <laughs> just made it in. I did. Yeah. <laughs> Nick of time. Yeah. Josh, uh, you've got a pretty heavy weekend ahead of you. Oh, yeah. With Hood to Coast. But, uh, yeah, I'm not too worried about it. It's not my, my first rodeo with that one. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the course for all those who have not heard about Hood to Coast. Okay. Um, Hood to Coast, uh, it's been going on for, God, I think, over 40 years now. Yeah. And uh, starts off at a Timberline Lodge on Mount Hood. And everyone makes their way uh, down into Sandy, then into Portland, uh, all the way to Scapoose and St. Helens, over the coastal range, and uh, down to Seaside within uh, you know, a little over a day. And in the rare part of Earth where you could go from 11,000 feet to right. sea level uh, in a weekend, how many miles does that end up being? That's uh, just shy of 199 miles. 199 miles. And you're not running it by yourself. No, you, uh, uh, typically people do it with a, a team of 12, and uh, everyone uh, takes turns uh, running uh, three segments of it. Okay. Um, so tell me a bit about your team and how it developed. Uh, well, my, my team this year, I'm uh, running with my company, which, uh, you know, it's nice. It, that way it's free. But... Uh, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so everyone, uh, you know, we, uh, we choose and get assigned legs, and uh, there's uh, two vans, typically, uh, six people per van, and uh, the first van meets up on top of a hood. Uh, everyone takes their turn running one leg. Uh, they meet the second van in Sandy, and then second van makes its way into Portland, and uh, you just keep on doing that leapfrogging all the way. You get a, a couple of breaks uh, yeah. through there, but pretty much adrenaline's pushing you all the way through. Totally. And uh, you might get a nap, but uh, it's more about just uh, keeping the energy going, keeping everybody's spirits up, and having a blast. That sounds absolutely nuts. And uh, it, this is no small thing. Oh, no. People travel from all over the nation. Oh, this is, uh, well, internationally known. You know, people travel from all over for this. Awesome. And uh, like, do you know how many teams are participating this year? Um, I, I haven't checked this year's count, but typically there are uh, about 1,000 teams mm -hmm. uh, and then 12 people per team on average. Uh, there are a few uh, ultra teams where they'll, they'll have only six people or so. Okay, wow. <laughs> uh, but uh, there's also a couple other races simultaneous. Uh, Portland to Coast, which is uh, there's a adult walking team uh, mm -hmm. starts at the Hawthorne Bridge and makes their way to the same finish line and then uh, high school runners. Wow. Uh, so Josh, I've known you as a runner uh, the whole time we've known each other. Uh, you do long distances. Is there any uh, leg of this course that really has you scared? <laughs> um. Not really. No. <laughs> uh, my, my second round uh, doing Hood to Coast, and then yeah. the, the third year I did it as well, um, I did Leg 5, yeah. which is uh, touted as the, the hardest one just uh, because it's uh, got the longest distance, mm -hmm. and it's got some uh, late elevation climbing for that, that last pass before heading down to the coast. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it just comes down to your training. Yeah. You know, uh, put your practice in, practice for hills, you know, practice for... Flats, you know, just make sure you, you put a little time in with the mileage. Yeah, uh, it, that's great advice. I know we have some audience members who are going to also participate in Hood to Coast, uh, which is quite amazing. Uh, what does this all uh, mean to you? Like, when, when it comes to running, 
I, I know it's something that you value greatly. And, and, and it's like for anybody who's watching, like, oh, okay, I'll do Hood to Coast. It sounds easy to this guy. Um, it's, it's part of your livelihood. You oh, run yeah. every day. You put in crazy miles. Uh, tell me a bit about your uh, origins in running and, like, why you do it okay. every single day. Uh, well, it, it started off as just a, a personal challenge. Yeah. Uh, with the zero running experience uh, back at the end of 08, a friend said, hey, why not run a first marathon? Yeah. So without any running background, nothing in school, um, you know, I looked up, did some research, you know, had some, you know, um, you know, pitfalls along the way, but, uh, you know, it took six months and I, I finished the marathon with a smile on my face and, mm -hmm. um, you know, here and there I've, I've had to take breaks, but, uh, yeah. I've, uh, been going at it pretty much constant since and yeah. I got like uh, 16 fulls behind me now. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Josh, I want to thank you for not only being a guest tonight, but also being a lively spirit, tons of energy <laughs> for the show. Um, it's my pleasure. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Josh, for my audience here and my audience at home on YouTube and uh, Facebook Live, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, you can find me on Facebook, uh, Josh Donahue, that's uh, D-O-N-O-G-H-U-E, or uh, Instagram, at running.jesus. <laughs> Dope. Josh, thank you so much for coming uh, out. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Marvin, take it away. Yeah. Everybody to turn their cell phones ring off. off. Ring off. Ring. 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 Can somebody silence that phone? Ring. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh, what? guys, I'm so ring. Ring. <laughs> ring. Do, do we swipe up? I don't. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, but, you can do it. You can sense. I oh. mean, I just don't know how to. So, oh my God! I got the assortment. Oh, it's on the side. It's on the uh, side. Oh, here comes my Twitter. Gazuga. <laughs> oh, thanks, Chris. Sorry, I'm a cell phone, so oh. my Tinder's coming in. <laughs> cell phone, why are you here today? Uh, well, I was shooting a music video. Uh, one of my friends, Haley Lynn, is shooting a music video about cell phones, and I'm a cell phone, so <laughs> I figured I could help her out. <laughs> That's awesome. Haley Lynn, is, of course, the uh, Lost in Portland alumni. Yeah. She also works on the show. Yeah. She's doing a video with you, cell phone? Yeah. That's beautiful. I know. She even got me, like... I mean, I got my SAG card now, which is really cool. Like, uh, I'm, I'm not an Apple phone, I'm a banana phone, so you don't get a lot of representation out here. <laughs> um, but yeah, just hanging out. I'm so sorry to interrupt your show, Chris. Well, I don't... You know, you should be sorry about that. In I fact, don't know how to turn I'm myself off. I'm going to put you, know you know I mean? on silent right now. Thank you so much. Can you, do you mind putting me on Do Not Disturb as well? Also. Yeah. Boom. Thanks so much. Get out of here, cell phone. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. I'm excited to bring you to the stage. Uh, we've got a great hip hop community uh, here in Portland, and uh, man, a, a man who really speaks from his soul, uh, Zypher the Wolf. Come on out. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? Y'all yeah. ready to turn up with me for a few minutes? Yeah. Let's get it. In a second. Sheesh. Ah. Uh, my name is Zeph for the Wolf. I'm ready to kill shit. It's been a little minute for me, but. I'm back now, so I'm ready to hurt these motherfuckers, man, really. Uh. I'm from the Ave, nigga. Don't say my bad, my nigga. I don't brag, nigga. 
That's on my dad, nigga. Shit. Yeah, we move bags, break down slabs, move that dad in my beamer. I got Christina, Serena in my hood like the Reaper. Uh, could you wait for me to see the light? Uh, I'm so blind. Dear mama, could you show me right? I feel alone. I've got abandonment issues, so I don't need no more issues. Baby, could you cancel my subscription? Yeah, who that be? Who that be? Who that be? Who that's me? Bitch, who that be? Who that be? Who that be? Well, that's Z, bitch. Where I be? I'm overseas, bitch. I'm gone, dog. I take Z's, bitch. Fuck, they talking, they look at me, uh. What you see in me, shit. Ah! Let's just go right into the next one. Yeah. Right into the next one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this song is me and my boy, my label mate, Sony Music, OFMG, One Fan Music Group, Universal Music Group. My boy, Bands Marino, Zephyr the Wolf. I cannot just do this shit for me. I do this to make so family eat. Pull up skirt, skirt, trap it out the cheek. They can't get a feature, they too cheap. Baddest bitch on my agenda for this week. Oh shit, oh shit, you know what I'm talking about. Pull up on poppy, you know that I rock it out. Uh. Brand new chain, yeah, you know that I rock it out. Bands Marino, pussy nigga, this a hold up. Uh. Everybody move from the front to the back, better act right round my soldiers, ayy Knock the dust off your shoulder, it don't get that much colder, ayy Leave your ass in the street, bitch, and maintain my composure, yeah. Yeah, my hood still love me, you need verses on the plug now I don't trust these bitches, cause they never show me love I got weight on me, but don't wait on me They hate on me, but no hate on me Get in the pink, like Kimberly, I get in the center just to center me Oh Lord, I have been sinning, can I repent again? This week, ayy I'm a slave to your vanity Man, this ice on my neck be tweaking She wanna fuck my wrist But I be working all week, ayy Addicted to the hustle You would think that a nigga tweaking uh, I do this to make your family eat Yeah, yeah Trap it out the jeep That can't pay the feature that too cheap On my agenda for this week Oh shit, oh shit, you know what I'm talking about Pull up on poppy, you know that I rock it out Brand new chain, yeah, you know that I rock it out uh, Bands Marino, one fan, what they talking about Yeah I go by the name of Zephyr the Wolf, I hail from Portland, Oregon This is my home, I'm glad to be here with you guys tonight, really this next song is a representation of me from sobriety or from addiction to sobriety, I should say. Took me over a year to write this song. It's called Hunnids. Ah! Uh, I flew the way, babe, I'm just riding my way. I'm spreading my faith, do that shit there on the daily. That's on the daily, that's every day, that's on the daily, that's every day, I float away, babe I'm just riding my way, I'm spreading my faith, do that shit there on the daily, that's on the daily, that's every day, that's on the daily, that's every day, that's on the daily, that's every day, these niggas hating. Just stay out my way, my chain's like a slave ship, uh, I got no patience, uh, I'm killing my demons, like, I came with the Haitians, uh, I'm at their neck, I'm like Polo, bitch, you recognizing my logo, bitch, I float away, I'm like the ocean waves, I let the water flow out my throat, little bitch, feed the knowledge, we don't need college, nigga, we need scholars, we don't need dollars, we need love and power, really think about it, only aliens live long and prosper, uh, elevate, medicate, Spread the message, give a faith. We are guys in every way. Rolling, pulling in a Chevrolet. My mind is on paper, my thoughts on probation. My body is fading like faded like tables, cause fuck my probation. 
I just call my nigga bands up, said Wolf, just get your bands, bro. You know you always fam, bro. Like Heidi Will and Bam, bro. I'm still searching for answers on the one they love to slander. So bitch, if you don't fuck with me, keep your hands off of my camera. <laughs> Babe, I'm just riding my way. I'm spreading my fit. Do that shit there on the daily. That's on the daily. That's every day. That's on the daily. That's every day. If I flew away, babe, I'm just riding my way. I'm spreading my face. Do that shit there on the daily. That's on the daily. That's every day. That's on the daily. That's every day. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. The name of that song is called Daily. <laughs> Thank y'all very much. I got one more for you, and then I'm ready to get up out of here. This one's called Meditate. This one's just me getting my mind right. Maniac. Yeah, yeah. Maniac. Uh. I be rolling in my beamer, tipping like that bitch a 64. Might change up my demeanor like the fuck I need these bitches for. I'm sipping on my body, I think I'ma need my handy though. I've been stressing on the low, I broke my watch, I ain't got no more. Time for that, time for that. Reverse the hands like we were shaking hands, trying to get my mind right, cause I got some shit to talk about. I'ma do the shit for the fam, huh? Fuck is you saying? I don't hear no speak, no evil, uh Put this shit on my mans Your story carries no sequel, huh I don't wanna be numb, I just wanna feel I just want my pockets look like Uncle Phil Could you grab the star while living on the hills? I just want the truth, tell me that it's real Hold up, hold up Sit with it, might just throw up Trying to get the bigger picture If you wanna help a nigga grow, then why you gotta like my bro up, uh I carry four, five Work nine to five, grind six to eight, that's all my life. Reciprocate my energy, let's get this cake. It's all you haters made me this way. It's all good, I'ma make my way on the interstate five all day, all day from the app down to LA. Shit, illuminate, levitate, elevate, meditate. Take me away, take me away. I'ma fly away, far, far away. Hey, I just wanna live in the sky someday, so bounce. Hold up, hold up, hold up, bounce. Uh, she, she, bounce. Uh, hold up, hold up, hold up, bounce. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much. Put your hands together for Zypher the Wolf, everybody. At Lost in Portland, uh, we really understand that like, we grow through our adversity um, and, and the things, the challenges in our life. And right. it was really inspiring for me to read about uh, your inspiration to take mm -hmm. out your notebook and start writing poems and hip hop. Right. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, um, just a, kind of a, a, a growing experience for me. When I was about 12 years old, my mother passed away. She um, she was basically killing herself, you know, just with substance abuse, which is something that I ended up encountering in my life as well. And uh, she just didn't love herself. So, like, I realized that, you know, music and poetry is just a, a powerful avenue for us to be able to, to reciprocate a message that we, we've grown to understand. And the biggest message that I've grown to understand throughout life is that you just need to love yourself, man. We're all, you know, God doesn't make mistakes, man. You know, so we're all here for a reason. And that's, that's why I started making music. Dope. Meditate. Elevate. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I got more questions for you. Um, I, I noticed sobriety is a, is a theme in what you mm -hmm. do and, and, and probably a struggle that you face right. every day. So do you want to talk about nine, that? Nine months clean um, from heroin abuse. So 11-26-2017, I got clean, changed my life, turned it around, uh, got back into music, got back into all the things that I love, and, uh, and I feel like, uh, I feel whole again, I feel human again, so I'm just very blessed to have been able to make it through that. That's very beautiful, and, and I want to thank you for opening up to our audience here um, in the studio, our audience at home, um, for everybody, all your new fans, uh, where can they reach you on the uh, interwebs? Um, right now, it's, it's a little harder to find my music because dealing with a lot with the label right now. I, I uh, recently got signed to one fan music group, Sony Music. Um, 
So that's a big deal for me. We're working on an album. It's called The Candles Are Lit. And um, the easiest way to just follow the process of all that happening is on my Instagram, which is under Z the Wolf, Z T H A Wolf, W O L F. Zephyr the Wolf. Zephyr, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for having me. Bless y'all. Everybody have a you great night. You got that. <laughs> Marvin, take it away. This is episode 27 of Live in Portland, and it's such an honor and such a blessing to be able to showcase the creatives that make this city. We do this every single week. We work hard. We've got a whole team. Can we give a round of applause for the Live in Portland team? I want to thank the audience for coming out and supporting our artists. I think if we make this a thing, we need to sit there in the front row Go to all the shows, go to the comedic venues, go to the music venues, support our artists. We can create an economy that really showcases what Portland has to offer in this world. Um, once again, this is episode 27, and I want to thank everybody for coming out. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace! Woo!